We're reading from Leviticus chapter 14, verses 33 through 38. Fedeber Adonai el Moshe fe el Aharon le mor ki tabu el eretz kenaan asher ani noten lechem la chuzah fe natati nega tzaraat bavet eretz achuzat chem uva asher lo habayt fe hikit le kohen le mor kenega Na nir a li babait. Vatsiva ha kohen ufinu et habait. Beterem yavo ha kohen liot et hanega. Velo itma kol asher babait. Veachar ken yavo ha kohen liot et babait. Vera a et hanega. Vehine hanega bekirot. Habait Shekarot Yerak Rakot O Adom Damot Umer Ehen Shafal Min Hakir Fayatzaha Kohen Min Habait El Petach Habait Vehiskir Et Habait Shivat Yamim And the Lord spoke unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, When you are come into the land of Canaan, which I give to you for a possession, and I put the plague of leprosy in a house of the land of your possession, then he that owneth the house shall come and tell the priest, saying, There seemeth to me to be as it were a plague in the house. And the priest shall command that they empty the house before the priest go in to see the plague. And that all that is in the house be not made unclean, and afterward the priest shall go in to see the house. And he shall look on the plague, and behold, if the plague be in the walls of the house, with hollow streaks, greenish or reddish, and the appearance thereof be lower than the wall, then the priest shall go out of the house to the door of the house, and shut up the house seven days. Vahuchata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Ha'alam Asher Heralanu Rachamim B'Yeshua Venatalanu Brit Chadasha Vahuchata Adonai Noten HaMashiach Amen Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the Universe, who showed us mercy in Yeshua, and you gave us a new covenant. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Messiah. Amen. Amen. Shabbat Shalom. You may be seated. So for the word of God is living and active and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. So it's amazing that we can read the same Torah portions every year, but each Midrash teacher is able to glean something new. In my preparations, I wondered, what did others in previous years talk about? And I, I looked, because it's all online. <laughs> uh, and I definitely learned a lot, but in my reading, God truly highlighted something different for me. He wants his church, his people, his house of worshipers to be purified. So we can call this message, what can wash away my sins? And we all know the answer, but if we don't know the answer, we can get to it at the end. So this week, we have a double portion the Metzora, talking about the infected one, and the Tazria, the she bears seed. So this week's Torah portion focuses on what, on that which makes us unclean and the rituals for purification. 
So there is an affliction known as tsa'arat, which in Hebrew is a physical manifestation of a spiritual malaise or illness imposed by Adonai on a person to punish an individual for a sin or to help them make amends for a wicked deed. It's a blanket term, sa'arat, that covers the leprosy of the skin, garments, and of the house. So this double portion covers a lot. But what struck my attention most and what the Lord was highlighting to me were the verses about a leprous house. So in some versions it talks about a defiling mold, but in the original text it talks about the sa'arat. So we can mostly agree that sa'arat is symbolic to the corruption and infestation of sin. It can start off small and if left unchecked could grow and spread to something unrecognizable and makes that which is infected condemned to being cast out. Starting from verse 33 in Leviticus chapter 14, Adonai spoke to Moshe and Aaron, saying, when you enter into the land of Canaan, which I am giving you as a possession, and I put a spot or a plague of leprosy on a house in the land of your possession, then the one who owns the house shall come and tell the priests or the Kohen. The Hebrews are entering the land of Canaan, the land promised to them, but it was also a land that was occupied by pagan worshipers before. The Hebrews are now living in a land of houses they did not build, full of things they did not build with crops, with crops they did not grow as referenced in Deuteronomy 6. According to ancient Jewish writings, it is believed that after conquering the land of Canaan, the other tribes of pagan believers had stored their idols of silver and gold in the walls and foundations of their homes, which now the Israelites live in. So in hopes of coming back to retrieve them since they had to leave in haste. The plague of leprosy, the spots or the sa'arat was Adonai's prompting to the Hebrews to have their homes be purified, purified of idolatry, mixture of beliefs, etc. So our God is a jealous God and wants our hearts and our worship. But do we still see idolatry in the church today? Do we see unbiblical mixture of culture and paganism within the church? After we identify the spot, the hollow streaks, the greenish or reddish marks, we go to tell the priests or the Kohen so that they may start the examination and purification process. Spiritually, do we not have the Kohen Hagadol or the high priest, Yeshua? This is what many would call a coming to Yeshua moment. So there's a process of identifying the mark, having it verified, getting purified, and then after originally getting purified, the asarat, and if the sa'arat comes back, then the whole place must be torn down and built again. Our Brit Hadasha, New Testament portion, gives us hope from Romans 6. We used to be slaves to wickedness and impurity, the wages of our sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Messiah Yeshua. The death Messiah died, he died once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. In reference to the Torah portion, Metzora, Isaiah 1 says, Though your sins are as scarlet, they shall become white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be like wool. So sin is a serious matter. It's a, it is a serious matter. In Matthew 5, if your eyes offend you, pluck it out. If your right hand is causing you to sin, cut it off, throw it away. For it is better for you to lose one of the parts of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. The affliction of Sa'arat was very serious because it can contaminate the culture, the people, the thoughts and minds of the group at large. And we know too that our minds are susceptible to deception because Satan himself is the master deceiver. So we must not let any foothold of deception to biblical truths contaminate our relationship with God or our uh, relationship with each other. The house of the wicked shall be overthrown, but the house of the upright shall flourish. So. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach. 
So bless you, Adonai. Bless our spiritual houses, Lord. Bless our families, our congregation, our meeting place with you, and the domains in which we fellowship and worship you, which should be everywhere. Thank you, God, that you know where we're going, that you have a purpose and a plan for us, just as you did with leading your people to the promised land. Adonai, we pray that any defilement, corruption, or plague of sin be seen immediately, be cast outside to the unclean place. Lord, build us up anew, stone by stone, over the foundation of Yeshua, whom, whom is our cornerstone. Purify us, Lord. Purify our house, our hearts, our minds. To your name be the glory. Amen.